Welcome to Don's Manny Factory. Uh, get rid of my hat here. I was just outside watering. Okay, so what's up today? Well, I'm setting up. See, I got my TIG welder down here. And I'm setting up to weld these plates. Ah, I'm sorry if this is, seems to be taking a long time, but boy, this project just turned out to be a lot more work than I expected. And uh, I've come up with a few problems in my design, but I didn't come up with a decent fix for it yet, other than what I had done before, so on the prototype, so I don't know. And I'll bring you back after I'm done welding. Basically, I'll just be doing little TIG tags on the sleeve to plate, and then I have to check them up in the lathe and, and take the nubs off and flatten the surface where the where it runs on the other sleeve and anyway and make it round and size it and do the final sizing all that stuff that i have to do to make it work right let's get at it continuing on with the distributor plate project i now have well here i'll have you look over my shoulder here for a second three plates are now sized the sleeves are sized and clearance properly just got back from the hardware store getting some snap rings and anyway so you can see just how uh, concentric and smooth they are no play I have to put all this shape into the uppers and drill and tap the holes for the screws so the critical measurement out of all of this now is where this pin is located for the vacuum advance because that will change the registration of the rotor to the cap so uh, this one is not exactly perfect it's pretty close okay let me show you a few things that i am dealing with here so what i just did was i put my cap on here and checked the registration of the rotor where i wanted it and I just put a vacuum advance in and put in a reference mark. And I used a, the point screw. I just put a longer one in over here to lock the plate so it can't move. So herein lies the problem. So here's a vacuum advance. And this one looked unfettered. So I thought, well, I'll just line up these screw holes. And you can see I, it's lined right up on the dot. So I used this as a reference. And then we grab this vacuum advance here and we put that one on and we line up the screw holes and you can see oh this one's shorter so it would change the registration of the rotor more advanced okay so then we grab another one here and we line up the screw holes and look how much longer it is so this is going to retard the registration so question is <laughs> I have to drill and put that pin in and I'm wondering what should I use as a standard I could replicate an OEM, make it exactly the same amount of degrees from, say, this pin here to that pin there. You know, I could do that. But I want to make sure the registration is right for Betsy. And uh, so that means just a little earlier on the uh, registration so that's why I picked this vacuum advance but you know it's like uh, what do I do go to uh, a bunch of auto parts store buy half a dozen vacuum advances average the difference <laughs> you know and then and then uh, put the pin there I mean there's always just replicate one of these it's a quandary you know I'm trying to improve the situation and it, it ain't easy also shows that uh, 
if this is going to be my zero registration, which it looks like it's going to be, the points are firing in exactly the right spot with the registration where it needs to be, um, I didn't carve out enough around this screw. There's not going to be much advance going before the plate hits that screw. So I need to, even though this is a replication of the factory hoop de doo right here, it's an exact copy of that. I'm just going to scoop it out a little more, which is something I did on my original prototype. If I go with the factory original, I guess that's the safest bet, but it's just not necessarily going to be correct. Because still, even though this distributor plate is concentric movement, so I have no dwell change problem when different vacuum advances move the plate, but what I do have is the different vacuum advances are changing the registration of the rotor. In a standard passenger car, stock motor, automatic, you probably never know that it was changing. Uh, but my car, where I'm trying to sort of push it to the limit, then every degree one way or the other is going to make a difference. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I can make a real mess when I try. Everything being done on the plates, it's time for the final assembly and, I don't know, demonstration. Decided to move down here into the basement because uh, it's 65 degrees down here and it's 100 degrees out there. Here's the good housing, bushings, and shaft from the last video. Uh, you'll notice <clears throat> I've assembled it. On the 13 degree, well, shall we just say slot for the mechanical advance. And uh, these things come in a bunch of different. So here's another 13. It's 13, 18, uh, but it was pretty rusty. So I wouldn't want to use this because I don't think the uh, points would last long against that rusted pitted. Uh, cam lobe, point lobe, but you'll notice this one is a 15 and a 10. And then this one over here, this one really blows me away. It's an 18 and a 21. What the heck would you be using that on? Okay, so uh, the distributor is half of crankshaft. So this one would give you 20 degrees at the, can at the crank. So, if you had 10 initial, that would only give you 30 degrees total. But, if you had the initial up to 14 or so, then you could have... Uh, it would probably start okay, wouldn't run on, and you'd have a 34 total. So, it is usable. The 15 would give you 30 at the crankshaft. So, now you're stuck at uh, initial timing down in the 4 degrees, 6 degrees, you know uh or eight you know some some motors like uh betsy when she had a 289 with the truck heads on it uh, it's it's an open chamber and it took 40 degrees of timing of uh, mechanical advance to get that thing to run strong it had no quench at all because uh that'd give me 30 put it 10 initial that'd give me 40 and then make up the difference uh, with vacuum. Anyway, so that's, you know, I just picked the, the one I want to use for the purpose at hand. Uh, you know, if you had a, if you had a rig with, uh, with mechanical only, you could easily run a 15 and have 30 degrees and then just put your initial wherever you need it, you know, up to 10, 12 degrees if you need it. Anyway, um, so much for that. So this is ready for assembly. So I thought I'd uh, show you guys. You'll notice that there's a little rubber thing, kind of a boot or hunk of rubber anyway, on the stop pin. And that has to be there for it to actually be 13 degrees. If you take that off, you'll have 15. 
if you don't have that little rubber piece, you can always just use some heat shrink. Put it on there, put a couple of layers on there, and heat shrink it, and it'll be fine. Okay, from last time, uh, you'll remember that uh, I was testing condensers. Well, now I have a whole bunch. i got to figure out which one I'm going to use in Betsy. Uh, these are the ones I have on hand. So, 239 was the highest. Uh, then 236. 235. 233. 229 and 226. <laughs> That's 0. 0.226 microfarads. So as you can see, they run the gambit. Now, 239 has a little star on it. This is the one that's been running into Betsy. Running into Betsy? Hmm. This one's been running in Betsy for 20 years or more. I don't know when. In fact, it may have been in there since 87. I may not have changed it ever. Um, and it's the highest one on the list, but since running <clears throat> the new prototype plate, it has begun pitting the points. If you look in here, you can see, I don't know if, how well you can see that. Let me try to light it. <sighs> that just, that helps a lot. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that. I can catch the light on it just right, but you can see how it, it had a little pit right there. So at this point, the peak is on the arm, and the pit is on the on the ground side. So what I was going to do was change to a different condenser, maybe the 236, and we'll see if that doesn't stop the pitting on the points. Okay, so there's that part. So what all did I accomplish? Oh man, let's uh, let's go through a few things. All of these OEM plates, except the rusty one, which is, uh, I think that's this one, yeah. Not the rusty one. Okay, so these OEM plates, and this one too, five of them. I have the clip off of this because uh, I want to take it apart during the demonstration, and I didn't want to have to struggle with that. turn off my ringer there so it doesn't ding me anyway uh the one that had the bad pin oh gosh i don't even know which one it is now i think it's this one here when i was making pins i put a new pin on this one too so now uh it's in perfectly good shape and they are all ready to be used every time i get somebody's ford in that has a bad distributor plate i now have some plates which uh, up until about two months ago, I did not have. How about my plates? So these are the new ones. So you'll notice this one here says OEM. Uh, in my confusion, not confusion, but just, uh, I just couldn't make up my mind where I wanted the pin location to be. And it didn't, it didn't dawn on me what was going on in my... Uh, didn't me on me. Hmm. What was going on inside my own distributor with Betsy. Uh, so we'll go over that in a minute. But, so, not knowing, this is what I did. This plate has the pin in the OEM position. This one is plus two degrees advanced. So the pin is moving this way advanced. So what that does is rotates... The distributor plate which changes the indexing of the rotor and cap and this one is plus four with the OEM plate and this advance the rotor registration is pretty good with the plus two and this one the rotor the rotor registration is really good with the plus four and this one the rotor registration is really good you know, but um, it's crazy. I uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, okay, so where was Betsy? Well, this is the vacuum advance out of Betsy. So with this plate, now when I was doing this in the prototype, I just assembled it. 
and turned this plate until I had the rotor, the registration exactly where I wanted on the on the uh, rotor. And I did that by putting a long screw into this slot right here where it is normally for the uh, condenser. And that locked the plate. So then I could check the registration and I just moved it until I had it where I wanted it, marked it, and that's where I put the pin. I never even thought about whether it was where the original one was or whatever. So, as it turns out, this prototype is a plus four because this is a long vacuum advance, but the combination was perfect in the car. And I'll I can still run it now. You know, I could substitute this plate because it's, uh, you'll notice these, there's no plate. See, I can't move that plate and it's got a nice tactile feel. These bushings are sized perfectly, so there's just no uh, problem with tolerances. So these plates are going to last a lot longer than this one will because the bearings are concentric and they have really tight tolerances so the wear surfaces are a lot bigger and and so consequently they'll last longer let's uh let's put something together here and uh, show you where i end up okay this is our distributor so uh let's see with betsy's situation using that vacuum advance I need I need to use this plate right here. Don't forget your ground strap. <clears throat> now these official Ford ground straps, they look like a crimp joint here, but they're not. They are welded because every time there's an intermittent ground, the coil's going to fire. Let's get the new points in here. You get really used to it. Part of what makes this fiddly is the fact that I uh, I have to do this holding both the distributor and the parts and the screwdriver. When it's in the car, it's really simple because the distributor doesn't go anywhere. Okay, uh, so you just uh, pretty much just open the points as wide as they'll go. I just guessed at that, so let's just see how good I am. And then I'm going to try something new and something I've not done before. Yep. I, well, it's just a hair narrow. You know, after you've done 200 of these, you pretty much have a feel for it. <laughs> Not that big a deal. Okay. What the heck here? What did I... What just happened here? Oh, I got that on the screw. Is that what I did? I'm using a long, I got a wrong screw somewhere. One of these is too long. That one. Boy, I tell you, you use the wrong screw and it locks the plate. It's probably going to be off here. It looks, there we go. All righty. So, an experiment I want to try today to see if I can get a dwell reading out of my dwell meter. Now, because it's all low voltage stuff, uh, I don't have to worry about high secondary voltages or anything weird like that. So, what my plan is, is to put this test light between a power supply and the distributor you know i'll just clip onto it and then what it'll show you is every time the coil is charging so the points are closed the light will come on and when the points open the light will go off and that's when the coil is discharging so i'll just set this up and i'll be right back i'm gonna look this up Or V8 right here. Alrighty. So, 289, 17 thousandths. 
26 to 31 degrees of dwell. The hypo is at 20,000. So I had it confused in my head. So that means I did all of this wrong. I should have... All of the pins should have been moved. There we go. Okay, that is 17 thousandths. Let's see where the dwell lands. Now, when I was doing tune-ups, I would just eyeball it, start it up, and set the dwell, and then be done with it. And let's spin her up and see what we got. Well, my dwell meter is saying 25, which is good. Normally, if I was putting in new points, I'd always set them around 25 because they're going to wear in just a bit. And then it'll be back up at 27 where it belongs. So now, let's see where the... Let's see where the registration is. So what we're looking for here... What we are looking for. Let me just uh, get you guys so you can see me here. There. Right there. Dead center in the middle of the rotor. That's where it's going to be firing. Okay. Let's see where this vacuum advance. Now this... Vacuum Advance was the one I had set up on Betsy. It has 11 degrees internal, 22 at the crankshaft. Okay, now let's see where the where the rotor lands. Right. Whoa. Okay, so you can see. I don't know how well you can see that. But it's right on the first little bit of the rotor. So that's not bad. That's kind of where I expected it to be. Now, there's where the spark gets turned off because the points close again. So you can see that the rotor is past the lug. A little disappointed in my uh, registration here. Of course, I do have the longest vacuum advance. So, maybe I'll have to uh, reconfigure here. Which I can do. All I got to do is... Uh, weld up the hole and uh, drill it in another spot. Well, let's see. I just overshot. Nope. Oh, right on the mark. Okay. Back to 25 degrees of dwell. Now, let's see where the registration is. Okay, get the light over here. Okay, registration is right where it belongs. That's almost textbook perfect. See, and that's how much difference it makes using the a different vacuum advance. Now let's pull it up to full advance. I don't know how many degrees that is on this particular vacuum advance. And now you can see it's it's into the edge just a little bit. But that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So now Yep, that's where it should be. It could actually be a little advanced of that. 
you know, it could be like right about there. You know, just a few degrees, two or three degrees more. Well, that's most interesting. What do I have now is the later model vacuum advance from 70 up. Okay, so as you can see, now it's just about in the right spot. See how it's clear over? If I pump this one up, so what should happen is it should fire right at the trailing edge there. Right there. Or leading edge, if you want to call it that. And that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, now with no vacuum advance, it fires there. And it can go all the way to there. See, in fact, the points are closing again before the rotor leaves the longer rotor leaves the uh, lug. Yeah, that's actually right where it should be. This would probably look right with the OEM plate and a stock distributor. This one would. But this one would be late on registration, and this one is completely out of control. It's so far out. This one, I love these vacuum advances, because you can change the springs you can change the pill for the amount of vacuum advance and then you change the spring for at what vacuum do you want the the vacuum advance pulling on so spring tension and travel are adjustable on these you can adjust the spring but you can't affect the travel unless you unscrew it to the point where the threads are coming off the pill in there and then it starts to restrict the movement, but it's not stable. There's when and how much. When does it come on? And when you have a cam, you'd kind of like the timing to be at different vacuum settings. I spared you some of that. So I just exchanged the plus four plate for the plus two. I took the uh, vacuum advance that was way too long and I welded up the hole and I drilled it shorter. Let's take a look-see at that. Okay, so this is without vacuum advance. So it is hitting, pink right there. See that on that first third of the rotor. Okay, and then It turns off the coil discharge right there when the when the extension is leaving the lug. So at that point, there'll always be rotor pointed at a lug during discharge. Not a big deal when you're doing low RPM. It's really a big deal when you're turning high RPM. So my dwell is right on the money. And I think that, well, let me get you back over here. I think that is where I'm going to leave it. And we're going to just run it that way. Just finishing up putting uh, Betsy back together here. I didn't change housings because this shaft seems really tight. So all I did was transfer the parts in, the plate and the old points, because I'm still testing uh, for pitting and I have a different condenser in here. I have the instead of the point uh, 239 I have the point 236 in here and we'll see how it does. Just took off the uh, window cap after checking the registration. I'm going to put my uh, soldered rotor back in and then it uh, will be time to road test it. it. Seems to run pretty good, and the registration seems to be right on. So we will see 
what happens. Well, that'll wrap up uh, this series on points distributors. Unless there's something else you guys need to see. Uh, you know, just leave a comment or something if there's something I left out that you want to see. Because uh, I left out a lot, that's for sure. Um, I spent the last day cleaning up. If you noticed, here, let me just get myself out of the way. There you are. Look at that. Take a good gander. It's not going to look like this for very long. So I spent, uh, oh gosh, I spent about three hours, maybe more, yesterday cleaning and servicing the lathe. But it works really great again. This is the last of our scorching days in Portland for a little while, at least in the foreseeable future that they're forecasting we're uh, on our last hundred degree day uh, that'll be it'll be cool it'll be only 90 tomorrow okay uh, I guess nothing left to do but road test Betsy I'll take her out later and see how she does that uh, I'm expecting uh, even more stable ignition than what I had before the prototype had some uh, clearances, you know, tolerance issues, so the plate wasn't as tight and secure as the new one that's in there. Boy, I tell you, the timing is just rock solid. And the registration is perfect as well. So, thanks for watching Don's Manufactory. I will catch you later.